This is a short video I'm making about this mandolin. It's a uh, Vega mandolin and it has a four digit serial number stamped on the end, which is almost illegible, but never mind. Um, which I believe makes it uh, an 1890s uh, model. And it's a lovely thing. So let's strum a few chords. <laughs> It's got that lovely ring to it that just goes on and on and on and on, as you'd expect from a bold back. Uh, but um, it's a, a richer, darker and, and sort of more modern sound than you would get from, say, the Neapolitan mandolins. So um, this is, uh, I believe, this is sort of one of the more basic vegas as far as decoration goes. So you've got this lovely decoration around the edge. Uh, to the shell and, and the sound hole and uh, obviously beautiful ribs around the back so this one had survived 100 plus years in a, a transatlantic trip just fine and then um, on its way to me uh, the guys at Parcel Force decided to sort of flat pack it for me um, and basically split apart most of the seams in the back what well, felt like most of the seams in the back by the time I repaired them all anyway. Uh, so there were also some old repairs in the back which which were perfectly sound but which had been broken by passports um, but weren't so neat looking. Uh, so as well as gluing everything back together again, it's all nice and solid. Uh, it's been refinished around there as well in shellac. Uh, tuners are enclosed and work extremely well there's most vintage tuners are pretty stiff um, these I'd say seven out of eight are as good as, as um, a modern mandolin and one's a little bit stiff but not too bad really I mean for the age it's bloody good but you know you've got to judge it by the best of what's available today haven't you um, I have a work on this uh, I've in order to preserve the, uh, the decoration on the fingerboard, uh, I'll bring it up close, there's some nice inlay on there. Um, I couldn't completely re-level the fingerboard, um, so it's been more or less levelled, uh, refreshed with the original bar frets. And th what that means is basically the frets uh, sort of down around the neck joint are slightly higher than they are at either ends in order to give you the level on the frets. So, um, you know, it's playable all the way. It's pretty. Uh, <laughs> so I have to get three notes up there. So there's, there's 20 frets as well, which is an, um, rather more than you would get on uh, on the Neapolitan, it's usually 17. Um, and that um, that slight extension there, it's, it's um, it doesn't get in the way of your picking either, which is quite nice. So um, that's probably uh, well. What else shall I say about this? Um, very impressed with, with this Vega all round. I've, I've, I've handled a, uh, a Vega patine before now and um, couldn't play it unfortunately because it wasn't playable but um, it's a beautiful thing to behold and uh, although this is a more basic model um, they're very very nicely made and in particular the lines of them sort of the, um, the moulding around the back here where this mm -hmm. that closer Oops. where the skirt goes around the sides um, it's always very chunky and a little bit crude on the Neapolitans I mean it does the job but um, whereas on this one it's uh, everything's much slimmer sharper neater uh, it's, it's it's not you know nothing's nothing's hugely different but everything's just a little bit 
neater and sharper and um, that makes it a joy to behold really especially especially up close I mean the way I look at it the Neapolitans look fantastic from 20 feet away and this one looks fantastic up close <laughs> might look kind of really boring from 20 feet away so it depends who you want to impress I guess doesn't it <laughs> So, what can we play? The only other thing to say about this one, um, I experimented with the strings. Uh, but st as you know, these old instruments do need like very lightweight strings to avoid breaking them, basically. Um, but uh, I've put some flat wound strings on. On my modern instruments, I like uh, Deodario's uh, FW74s, and um, which are basically Deodario chromes just repackaged from mandolins. So. Um, I've made up a lightweight set using uh, chromes for the for the, uh, the two bound courses, and um, I don't know whether it's a good thing or not. Really, I don't know whether it's the right thing to do on this. Uh, it sounds alright. Um, when I first strung it up, I put uh, uh, PPs on, and um, the D course in particular was was very strong. Um, <laughs> Sort of noticeably different from the A course, whereas uh, it's it's toned down a bit now. Um, a lot of people would say dead and horrible, you know, but um, so it depends what you like. Um, but anyway, uh, it's an experiment. It sort of works. And um <laughs> So there we are, one bag of mandolin.